Hello, this is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary here in Seattle Public Schools. Thank you for joining us today. This is our first lesson of the week on literary story elements for fourth and fifth graders. Now, every day I miss my students back at Dunlap Elementary, but I have managed to find three students here at my apartment that have been my substitutes, and I have them right here in front of me. Here we have Abraham. Mm-hmm. Ready for a good day at school? We have Bryce in the Roomba. Raring to go. And we have Bobby. Getting ready for a lot of learning today. The only problem is they just aren't following any of our classroom rules or expectations. I mean, just look at our class dojo page. Come on, uh, oh, and there he goes again. Mm. And, I, what, what the, oh, this is just not appropriate. Not appropriate, we can do so much better. Come on. As we read today, we're going to pay close attention to the different elements of fiction characters, the people in the story, setting, where and when the story takes place, plot, what happens to the characters in the story, and conflict, the problem the characters need to solve. The reason we need to pay close attention to these elements is because it's a great reading comprehension strategy. By understanding all the different elements of fiction, understanding the overall story, becomes much, much easier. The book we're gonna be reading this week is called Not My Girl. It's written by Christy Jordan Fenton and Margaret Pokiak Fenton, and it's illustrated by Gabrielle Grimmer. Before we start reading, there are some really important things you need to know about the context of this book. The characters in this book are Inuits, which means they're a group of indigenous people that live in the Arctic regions near Greenland, Canada, and Alaska, where it's very, very cold. In the 1930s, the Canadian government created what it called Indian Residential Schools. The purpose of these schools was to take indigenous children and get them to act more like white Canadians. They would spend years away from their families, and they would learn things like how to speak English or how to worship Christianity. If that sounds terrible, well, it's because it was. We know that every person's culture is valuable, and so any attempt to get rid of it is terrible and wrong. This story is going to be about not what happens to the main character at the school, but how hard it is for her to return back to her family. This is not my girl. It was as though the wings of 1,000 birds soared in my heart, propelling me back to my family. I leapt over the side of the boat and ran toward my mother. Her face remained as still as stone. Not my girl, she called in what little English she knew. The birds in my heart fell from their sky. I caught a glint, and glint means small flash of light. I caught a glint of my own reflection in my mother's hard eyes. The long braids she had once lovingly plaited, and plaited means to interweave, she had lo once lovingly plated, had been cut away, along with everything she remembered of me. I had grown tall and very thin from two years of hard chores and poor meals at the outsider school. When I left for Aklavik, I was just eight. Now I was 10. In that time, I had learned how to add numbers and how to read books. I had perfect table manners and I knew when to say my prayers. I could speak English and French. 
but I no longer knew the words in my own language to tell my mother that I was her girl. Not my girl, rang out again like the slap of a ruler on a desk. Turn to your turn and talk partner. And remember, your turn and talk partner can be a friend or family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal. It can also just be an imaginary person you're calling on the phone. But turn to your turn and talk partner and tell them what has happened in the story so far. You might have mentioned that our main character has come home after years of being at a school where she wasn't treated well and where she learned all these different customs that are not like her family's. Her mom, when she came home, said that she wasn't even her daughter anymore. I turned to my sisters and brother. They just stared. I tensed to run, but my father caught me in a tight embrace. An embrace just means a hug. Hold him on, he whispered. I had not heard my Inuit name in so long, I thought it might shatter like an eggshell with the weight of my father's voice. At the school, I was known only by my Christian name, Margaret. I buried my head in my father's smoky parka, and a parka is just a jacket, turning it wet with tears. I felt a touch much gentler than my father's strong grasp as my mother's arms joined his. Together, they sheltered me in that safe place between them. We might have embraced forever and my tummy not growled. Luckily, my mother had brought my favorite foods for me, whale blubber muktuk and dried fish pipsy. No more cabbage soup, porridge, or muskrat like I was fed at the school. I took a piece of muktuk and shoved it in my mouth. I chewed and chewed it and tried to wrestle the rubbery chunk down, but my throat closed and my stomach turned. I had to spit it out. I followed my family home silently as they honked away like a gaggle of geese, and a gaggle of geese is just a flock or a group of geese. Like a gaggle of geese, I wondered what kind of bird I had become. I no longer felt like I belonged to this flock. Turn to your turn and talk partner again and tell them what has happened in the story so far. You might have mentioned that our main character, Ulaman, or Margaret, gets a big hug from her dad when she gets upset and tries to run away. You also might have said that her mom gives her her favorite foods from when she was younger, but she can't even swallow them, which makes her sad and embarrassed. As we neared our tent, I caught sight of my father's sled dogs. I ran eagerly toward one, she sprang at me with a fierce snap. Wait until you wear our, our scent again, Ulaman, my father said, reassuring me with the English he had learned as a boy at an outsider school. My first few weeks at home were difficult. I could not eat the food my mother prepared. I relied on my father to translate almost everything, and I had lost the skills I needed to be useful. Couldn't set traps, skin hairs, or pluck geese. I knew how to recite verses and make my bed, but those things did not help feed the family. 
I wished my older sister had not moved away. She had been to the outsider school. She would have understood how hard it was to return home a stranger. One day, after I tangled a fishing net, my mother gestured, and gesture just means a signal with your head or with your hand that means something. My mother gestured for me to go play. I ran straight from my friend Agnes' house. She was my best friend from school, and I wanted to see if she would like to go hunting for goose eggs, a food we both love. Her mother met me at the door with a stern, and stern means very serious. At the door with a stern look, Agnes joined her. My mother and father say I am an outsider now. They do not want me playing with children from the school, Agnes said timidly before closing the door. Agnes was my only friend. Her words stung almost as deeply as my mother saying, not my girl. Turn one last time to your turn and talk partner and tell them what has happened in this story so far. You might have mentioned some of the ways that Ulaman doesn't feel like she belongs at home anymore. Like her dogs that don't recognize her, how she can't help her family with the basic chores, and how her friend Agnes won't even play with her. Now let's talk about the different elements of fiction in this story. Characters are the people in the story. Who are the characters in this story? You might have said that the main character is Ulaman or Margaret. Another character is her mom. There's also her dad and her friend Agnes. Setting is where and when the story takes place. What's the setting of this story? To find out the setting, you have to do a little bit of detective work. The first thing I noticed is that Margaret refers to herself as an Inuit on page five. And I know from my prior knowledge that the Inuit people live near the Arctic. Then I noticed that Margaret mentions where her school is located back on page four. I had to do a little bit of Googling, but I found out that this school is in a northern part of Canada. So the story probably takes place in northern Canada. I also looked throughout the book and saw this real life photo that mentions Margaret being a child when, she was, when it was 1937. So that makes me think the story takes place in either the late 1930s or the 1940s. Plot is what happens to the characters in the story. What's the plot of this story so far? The most important plot point is that Margaret has returned home from school and her mother has said that she's not even her daughter anymore because of how much she's changed. Some other things that have happened is that Margaret can't eat her family's food anymore, and she can't do chores around the house, and even her best friend won't spend time with her. Conflict is the problem the characters need to solve. What's the conflict? In this story. The main conflict is that Margaret no longer feels like she's part of her family anymore. There are a lot of strong examples in the text that show just how alone Margaret feels 
and how sad that makes her. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. Remember to find the quietest part of your house and get a good book that you're excited to read. Make sure you read for at least 30 minutes and the entire time you read, I want you to be thinking about the different story elements we talked about today. The book I'm reading is called One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. It's about three girls from New York that have to go spend the summer with their mom who they haven't seen for years. It takes place in 1968 during the height of the civil rights movement in Oakland, California. There's a group called the Black Panther Party that plays a big role in this book. Let's get reading. And don't forget to think about those story elements. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website. 